Hello gamers, this is Expressman, and this is, well, probably the last in what's become a six-part series in uh, getting started in Space Engineers. I will surely do more videos on sort of advanced or developing topics, but this gets you your basic base and things up and running so that you can, uh, you can keep going from there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a proper refinery, uh, maybe a cargo container to go with it. Um, then I'm going to show you how to make uh, and build blueprints. And I'm also going to show you how you do that with, with the nanobots mod that we installed way back in video one. Um, because, you know, you're going to want to create things and that's good. And then you're going to want to save things and that's understandable. And you're going to want to build things that uh, it, both you made, you want to recreate them. Um, that's part of the power of space engineers, um, as well as you want to build stuff that the communities uh, made that's, that's cool. So let's do it. Um, the only, seriously, where'd my game go? The only thing I really did since before is uh, I just kind of added more flooring. That's basically it. Um, and I ordered a bunch of parts because it's just nice to have on hand. I just went through the production thing. I was just like, I want a hundred of these and a thousand of these and just, just did that for a while. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to do is, is this basic refinery uh, so that we can uh, mine gold and silver uh, as, as well as other things in the future. Um, so uh, let's see, is that on my G menu? It is not. So um, I will not be doing a basic refinery again. So let's just hit, hit G. I'm gonna type REF for refinery and there's the big one right there. I'm gonna drag it on top of the small refinery. And uh, you can already see, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, it's pretty large. Um, I'm going to attach it to the end of this assembler. That is not, by the way, how I normally operate because uh, this is prone to clogging. And the people who know me are like, probably like, oh my gosh, Expressman, why are you even saying that? That's such a bad idea. Well, it's because this assembler is temporary. It's going to go away eventually. Um, but uh, as you can see, I rotated this, by the way, so that I know that that connector is right up on the assembler there also leaving room because again we mentioned uh, mods speed mod yield mod and uh, efficiency mods those can be attached to this side here now we could do a situation where the base goes like up and up and up but i'm going flat on this one so what do we need for this um mostly steel plates as in 1200 steel plate um let me add this i think check my g menu real quick yep build planner is empty let me right click it's been added to build planner. Let's just uh, let's just center click on this and see what happens. Yeah, we're a little short on some things, but let's get started. Now, as I mentioned before, um, once we have the cryo chamber, the real eventual goal is to uh, get to space because you got to start looking for that uranium and that platinum. Um, so. Ah, we're up to functional already. Sweet. Oh, no, we're fully built. Ha, ha, ha. All right, check that out. There is our refinery. Uh, that does mean we technically don't need the little one anymore, but I will leave it there for the moment. That also means that we have the capability of hitting our power pretty hard. Uh, we could uh, prioritize building a, like, we could, we could mix and match what we could literally do. We could mix and match them. You know, we could do a combination of speed yield and efficiency we could do like two efficiencies and two yields um it, it just kind of depends on what you want to do um that's not a terrible idea two efficiencies and two yield four efficiencies is crazy because they don't use much i mean it's great because you don't use much power um but it still can take a long time for even these big bad boys to chug through large amounts of cobalt and other um uh, special uh force um so uh, I will just leave that for the moment. And well, I, I do want to show you how to, to, to install those at some point. In fact, all right, we're talking about it. Let me get, not run out of suit energy here. And uh, the, the final discussion we need is, is like, what, what are you going to do to get to space? And that's part of where this projector thing may come in because it can help you on that. Um, technically, because it's a hydrogen, so atmospheric ships, obviously require atmosphere excuse me 
Um, so uh, I'm not super familiar with the other atmospheric planets. On Mars, an atmospheric engine will get you roughly up to 5,000 meters, depending. Um, but you need to go a lot farther than that to be in orbit. Uh, and of course, in, in space, then the atmospheric engines are absolutely useless. Ion engines are the opposite. Ion uh, are, so like atmospherics, they're purely electrical powered, which is nice because you don't have to duct anything. But they only work in space, and once you're in probably more than than 0.1 gravity, uh, they're not going to do much for you. You'll fall like a lead balloon. Uh, and then there's hydrogen, 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 oh hydrogen, and hydrogen is the the utility fuel uh, engine. They work on on in space. They work on planet. Um, now, I do make ships that are atmospheric, and I do make ships that are uh, ion. There are reasons and advantages for those things. But by and large, particularly since I'm all about the old uh, hydrogen efficiency mod, uh, I, I tend to make things in hydrogen. You could actually take our little uh, mini miner and go straight up to space in this, I think. I don't think you'd run out of fuel before you escape gravity. You can actually do it in your suit. It's really dicey, uh, but you could pretty much go up to space hit like one asteroid and come right back down uh, to Mars <laughs> and do basically nothing else not hop from asteroid to asteroid excuse me because you have no way to replenish your hydrogen in your suit even if you bring a bunch of tanks I mean you'll, you'll use them getting up there so <coughs> um, uh, you could uh, in, in, in conceivably just fly this up there. Um, I, I, if, if I were to do that, I would carry enough material on my person to build a uh, H2O2 generator um, in case the worst happens. <laughs> but again, you've like literally only got a couple minutes of power when you do that. So it's dicey. Um, generally, uh, I build an explorer ship that's purpose designed. Uh, it is a sort of a miner, but it's more of a flyer that can mine than a miner that can fly, if that makes any sense. Um, and that's what I go looking for um, ores with. Another thing I didn't put on this that I could have is an ore detector. Uh, that's not a bad idea at all. It's quite a bit more effective than um, the one that you have in your hand drill. Um, great, great range. Um, but, um, yeah, that should be added to this somewhere. All right, so back to the task at hand. Let me open up an FTG menu. Excuse me. Okay, I've been doing a lot of these videos. Cut me some slack. Um, there's a speed module. Uh, why don't I see the other ones? It's got the plus. Oh, because it's all three. Gotcha. And uh, so there's speed yield and power efficiency just making sure that it, they don't require anything weird power cells is kind of the demanding aspect of power efficiency uh, if we flip this bad boy around you see how it has the small yellow connectors on it uh, those can be aligned with the small yellow connectors uh, it can be either way it can be vertical like this or horizontal like this doesn't matter it doesn't make any difference whatsoever as long as both of them are connecting so there's two speed or not to speed, those were to uh, power efficiency. Here's the yield. Oops. Uh, what do they require? Superconductor? Well, okay, that requires gold. But we're, we're about to refine gold soon, so that can become a thing. Uh, let me uh, make 40 power cell in here. Because um, I, I generally don't order unless I need it. Yep, I just got a bunch of stuff being built in here because we've got so much iron. Um, give that a minute to build out, and then, yeah, then we'll have uh, power efficiency so that when we do start dumping on this thing, it's not just going to devastate our batteries as it will tend to do. And wait till you build two or three or four or five or six of these things. I built more. I think my record's 14 in one base. Um, the power consumption can be pretty, especially if you're running straight speed mods on all of them, which is like 
50 speed mods or something ridiculous like that um the power consumption can get pretty ridiculous all right let's see what's happening uh let me um right click on these guys to queue up their stuff um interesting it's a little short on different stuff we'll clear that up in a minute steel plate really that's holding us up on both of those all right call me oh i thought i had a lot on my person did i just use it up i guess i did okay um let's move some steel plate to the head of the line there give that a minute um so we need to build a a projector well first of all um it's it's kind of trash right now. Uh, we need to take uh, we need to make a blueprint of this. I never make a blueprint with it connected because I think it keeps it all together. Uh, so let's. I heard an explosion. That's interesting. Kind of ominous. Um, it's not the first time that's happened. Uh, da, 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 da. What was I going to do? I'm going to turn my engines on, number three, and disconnect, number one. Um, I would also have been in trouble if I had my batteries in recharge mode, but they were not in recharge mode. So let's just go over here, set down. Um, and then pop out. Whoops. And uh, now that we're looking at it, we can press Control and B. Um, that makes it. It's already exists. There's nothing to save. It's named what your grid was named. We named it Mini Miner, um, and that's it. And in fact, we can just hit the Publish button behind my body, uh, and um, it could be in the Steam uh, uh, warehouse thing, and other people could download it. Uh, we don't need to do that. Uh, in fact. Um, It'll just be in our system. And this, this is not specific to this instant or, or server. Like if I popped into another server right now, it would be right there. So it's great. I'm like subscribed to it permanently. It helps that it's mine. Um, so I have that blueprint now. I could, I could theoretically rebuild it. Well, how do you rebuild this or any blueprint for that matter? Um, I'm going to build something that is from the community that I don't think I've ever actually built before. Uh, to show you the process um, because A, you'll either just want to use these things or B, as I mentioned in the previous video, you'll want to uh, tear them down and learn from them. Um, now, if you're in a creative mode, you can literally just press um, Control F10 and select one of these things and just click paste and it's just, you just paste it in. It's, it's creative mode. You're, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, but we are not in creative mode. We are in survival mode. So we got to do it the old fashioned way. Um, let's go see if we can build our, uh, a couple metal grids short. Interesting. Well, it's functional and it's functional. All right, we're good. All right. That'll, that'll help ease the consumption demands. Uh, we will worry about the other two when we have some, uh, gold for superconductors. All right, so we, uh, let me see, do I have enough resources to just do general stuff? I do. Okay. No into your plate, but um, remember uh, in the very last video how I dropped down a, I started a small grid build by dropping a, um, landing gear. Uh, we could do that, or uh, just for fun, I could show you the other way. Um, which is, um, change my, and be fussy about my texture here. I was using the cement texture just for fun, which I actually haven't done much before. Um, but let's go with, uh, let's go with clean and, uh, put that right there. Um, maybe put that right there, uh, and, uh, weld them up. Um, I could show you the other way. Um, the landing gear thing works just fine. Um, nah, you know what? I'll show you the landing gear thing because there's a couple techniques there that I A, want you to know, and B, uh, even now I use it uh, a fair bit. It's not like a bad way of doing things. 
All right, so um, same thing we did before. Um, just drop that thing in there. There it goes. Uh, and then, um, yeah, wrong, wrong button. Uh, some basic blocks. I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll kind of create a little, little shape just to sort of get it up and out of the way. I'd rather go excessive on this than, than regret it. Uh, but here's the thing, we need to build a projector, but this projector needs to be on the small grid, which means it needs to be a functional projector on the small grid. That's a bunch of things going on there. So what we're gonna do is, um, besides the fact that we just welded up a little bit, uh, we need a couple special things. So let's just grab some empty G menu here, press G. Uh, we need a control panel. Uh, it's this little guy right here. Um, they added a new one, that one, which is cool, but, uh, does it work on small grid? I'm trying to tell. It may be great, but I'm gonna grab the little one. Uh, we also, we need a small battery, but we've already got that. We also need the projector itself. So please don't make me, uh, progression again. What is progression gonna make me build? Like I wanted you guys to see how to handle projection. I didn't necessarily want it all the time. Um, where is it in the progression? There it is. And its parent is offset light. That's what the new update. I've never even, oh, anything in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, fine. We'll do a interior light. And those are just made of comp and we have comp. So yay. Um, <laughs> we'll take care of that later. All right, ta-da. Um, so now I can come back to my, let's do control four, G menu, projector, there it is. And uh, drop it in there. So that's all we need to do this little thing we're about to do. So what I typically do is uh, grab the small battery, which is on a different bar. It's right there because it's got to be power. Almost almost zero consumption, but it has to have more than zero. Uh, I will go back to my four bar and grab the little control panel. And literally, it's just the most basic blue panel in existence. So I guess that's upside down. I've never really noticed. Drop that little blue panel in there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we need to drop this projector in. Normally, I'd put the projector right here, but I kind of want to show you. I'll put it on the side because it'll make it easier for you to see what's actually going on. So this is sort of dumb, but oh, it's already right. That's funny. Um, there is a side, as you can see on the bottom right, with no crosshair pieces. And on the left, you can see the one with two. And on the top, you can see the one with four. That's the configuration I want it right there. You always want four on the top and you always want two toward the front, which is that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that right where it is. It doesn't really matter if it's on the center line or not, you're gonna end up adjusting the projection anyway. Um, oh, we got another storm happening. That's just lovely. Uh, let's see, this needs, this needs anything special, nope. I'll add that to build planner. Uh, that will need to power cell. And that I'm sure I've got the stuff for. Well, it needs display. I'll make sure I add that. So we got everything but five middle grid and two power cell. Oh, it's still stuck on, on me trying to build the, uh, let's clear this out. Uh, but we do need the two power cells. So <clears throat> production, power cell. Um, we'll do twice as many. All right, all components were successfully withdrawn. Create the battery. Create the blue panel. Create the projector. That's all we need. That is all we need right there. So now you're gonna see why, Expressmen, why have we suffered through your semi-transparent panels throughout this entire game? Why can't you have fully opaque panels like a normal gamer? You're about to see why. Um, so come back here um, and I'm gonna crouch. This is all about angles. And 
I'm going to press uh, K to, to access the blue panel. And I have to go to projector on the list. Uh, and then under projector, it says blueprints. So I'm going to click on blueprints. And here, as you've seen before, my entire blueprint list, which is huge. I have many. Uh, and then down here in the bottom, which is the, the ones that I've subscribed to from the, the workshop, uh, I have this one that's just intriguing to me, besides the little murder pod, um, which is this one right here. I think it's atmospheric. It's really actually hard to tell. Um, but if I click copy, to, it's behind me, copy to clipboard, um, it's projecting it now, but let me actually step away from here and show you. So it's kind of like ghosted in the air and it's in the wrong spot um, very clearly. And uh, I'm actually trying to see as I'm popping around. Oh yeah, right there would be a perfect attachment point. Uh, and actually, is it centered? It is centered. It's actually off center because the 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 projector is is one over but that works perfectly for us by 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 chance uh so we don't need to adjust that we just need to adjust it on the the forward axis so i'm getting as far from this blue panel as i can i'm just standing on the ground actually and i'll hit it lights up yellow which means i can access it so i'll press k and now you can see why my dialogues are semi-transparent because uh you remember you got to select the projector and then if you scroll down, you'll see uh, offsets, horizontal, vertical, forward, pitch, yaw, and roll. Now, sometimes uh, when these things come in, they're at some funky angle, they're sideways, they're upside down. So you got to fiddle with the pitch and roll. And sometimes you want to actually print it or, you know, uh, project it sideways because there's a better attachment point on the side. Um, but I made the correct assumption. And uh, so I'm going to hit forward offset to slide it forward. Uh, and what it'll do, see it's way forward right now. I'll bring it back slowly on the forward offset. And at some point, I'm going to do it one tick at a time. That's 11. Whoop, it just changed. So I think that's actually it. Because it'll show me what is printable. It'll become brighter, which I think it just did. So let me get out of here. Fly up here. Um... So that worked. However, it is covering like one piece of little decorative panel that was right there. So I want to go vertical just one. Uh, so I'm pressing K, going back to projector and uh, vertical offset. Um, it's going to be minus one. That's why you just have to pay attention to the relativity. Um, so cool. I think that's perfect. Let's look. This is about as easy as they get. You just often have to fiddle with them a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's ready to go. So here's what can happen now. Three things can happen. One, you just walk up to it and start welding. And you have to have the right stuff in your inventory to weld that particular part. But notice now that the part, the battery now has a frame and everything touching the battery, and I was right, this is atmospheric, is now bright colored because it's it's like the next buildable thing. That's one way to do it. And you just run back and forth, weld, 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 weld. Great for small things when you have like no resources. Horrible for big complicated things when you just don't want to stand around and do this all day. So option two and three are building it massively quickly. And the two ways you do that is either with a welder wall uh, which a welder wall is what it sounds like. You, uh, there are fixed welders in this game. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details of that. That is an advanced course topic, but um, there is what they look like. And literally, uh, there's the large grid one. Uh, you can make a whole grid of these. Uh, no th no thanks to the storm for making everything just dingy. Uh, I could go admin mode on this and make the storm go away. <coughs> My voice is mad at me for talking for how many hours on these tutorial videos? It's like, be done. Be done already. Um, almost. Almost there. Um, 
So what you do is you, you build a grid of those welders. You pipe it in, of course, to your to all your components um, so that they have you know unlimited access to your components. And then um, you turn this these welders on and beautiful, massive amounts of sparks. And actually, for something this small, you could literally do it with four welders, two across and two up, you know what I mean, two and two. Um, most things need a little more. Um, but the trick is you have to put uh, the projector on a piston, push it forward, and start pulling it out and print, 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 quite slowly. But still, you can build an entire ship in like three minutes. That's great. Uh, and if the server does not have nanobots, it's what you should and need to do. Um, however, if the server does have nanobots, the mod that we installed in when we set up this world, you do not need weld mods. Um, nanobots, well, I'll just show you right now what nanobots do. So let's grab an empty section of G menu here. Uh, do they hide it in progression again? I'm telling you what, disable progression. Uh, let's try it again. Nanobot, what are you hiding under? I didn't see it. You know, they probably just call it build and repair. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it says it's available. I just I just needed to call it the right thing. That's what it came down to. Blocks. Build and repair. All right, so I'll drop that into my system. Uh, Nanobots has a huge range. I think it's 400 meters. And uh, so I'm just going to come to a conveyor connection. I could do either of these. Uh, it has a bottom connector and two side connectors. That's something you might want to pay attention to. So um, it does also technically have a front and a back. It's hard to see them. It's a little bit annoying. So I could barely, barely see that to our right is the front. Um, and to our left is the rear. So if I rotate this properly, which was not that, there we go. Front should be toward me, which is what I want it to be. So uh, let's build this. I, if I remember right, it's not too demanding on parts. It doesn't take anything fancy like things that require gold or silver. Uh, the other thing I like about nanobots is when you build them, they default to turned off. And that's a good thing. Okay, so there it is in its glory. Uh, left, right, because the orientation is front and rear and that's what we want it to kind of be with our setup down there so good perfect um, front rear only matters because just like how we did offsets with a projector you can do offsets with uh, data bots sometimes if you need to um, it, just like anything you know we can access it through like the K menu and um, which I didn't press I pressed I uh, and there it is build and repair system it is turned off um, there's a lot that goes into this and I'm not going to be super exhaustive about it, but um, walk mode means only things on attached grids. Um, so I would switch this to fly mode because I don't think our second grid counts as attached. Maybe it does. Um, weld before grind. That's fine. I often switch it, but it's not necessary. Um, use ignored color. That can be handy in some cases. You can actually specify a hue saturation and value so that you can paint something that you don't want it to weld. So if you're like trussing a lot of things and you don't want it to weld it up because all of a sudden you're just out a couple thousand <laughs> steel, um, you, can, you, can, you can build it in a certain color, which you never see. So it can be a pretty weird color because it never actually gets built. Um, Help others, that's like a cooperative mode thing. We only have one unit at the time. Uh, build new is great, well to functional only ignore, blah, blah, blah. Um, use grind color. This is pretty awesome for recycling, so you can specify a specific color to grind it down. Uh, there's a color value I have memorized in my head that is bright pink. Um, and so I will just run around and paint things shockingly pink and bzz, 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 they go away. It's awesome. You can uh, grind whole ships that way. Um, this grain color is, is fine. 
Um, it'll janitor blocks. Um, it'll also pick up uh, things that you've mined. That's kind of why I said in the beginning, like if you have a server that has this, I would build it crazy early because it actually helps you mine. Um, and um, then there's, uh, you can click show area and you get this really weird blanket um, that shows you how much area it covers, which as you can see is massive. Um, but you still be in situations where you need to slew it over to some further place. Um, and then, of course, there's the offsets. You can move it height and blah, blah, blah. And I turn the sound volume on because it's the sound of it working gets pretty annoying. Um, okay, so it's all set up. So what happens is when I turn it on, it's going to detect that there's partially built stuff over there. And it's going to continue building it. And it has a little light situation when it's working properly. Um, I think that means it's fetching items. I don't know. If, there we go. Oh, it has the little glowy thing turned on too. I think some serve. Uh, a lot of times that's not turned on, so you don't see that animation. But it helps you know what it's working on. So as you can see, uh, it's being built. Uh, I do need to order some uh, more <clears throat> power cell. Uh, I forget how much small grid takes, I think 20. Uh, where's power cell, there it is. Oops, not hundreds. Ah, uh, we're out of nickel. That's going to be a problem for power cells. So it'll build what it can, but it'll ignore what it can't. And uh, so we can just come over here, grab our super handy, handy, dandy miner. Three, turn the engines on. One, disconnect. Um, and let's go uh, to our... Didn't we have a closer nickel mine? Like, wasn't that nickel? Why isn't it not showing me? Yeah. I don't know if I used it for nickel, but it's definitely something it has over here. Let's hop out. What was this? Yeah, it was nickel. All right. Let's mine that up real quick. Same thing we did in the previous video. I'm going to right click. Definitely watching the bubble here. I'm empty, so I can take a pretty aggressive angle while I'm empty. Not necessarily true as I, whoops, and I start. Uh, sometimes I like to clear, sort of carefully, I like to clear like around. Um, if you're not careful, you can waste a lot of material, but in the case of nickel, it's almost as common as dirt. Oops, I'm tipping over. Uh, nickel is almost as common as dirt in this particular part of the map, apparently. So um, I can be a little bit less careful about wasting it than other things. Whoop. Okay. Ah, all right, all right. Still got to be careful as in don't destroy the ship careful. Watch the bubble, watch the bubble. Bubble is your friend. Oof, okay, here we go. Um, I, I really, I can't turn my light on? That's weird, I was always sure you could do that. My suit light. All right, keep in mind the weight limits. Still matters as much as ever. Twenty-three thousand. Part of me too doesn't want to get too much nickel because it'll take the refinery. Now, granted, we've got the big refinery now. It'll chew through nickel pretty fast. I say we don't want to spend forever and a day refining it when we're probably going to have to throw more iron in there at some point. Forty-two thousand. 
using a lot of E and Q key for balance. 56,000. It is a delay, it's not super precise. You'll see it tick up in increments, like we went straight from 56 to 64. Okay, I'm gonna level myself out and get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have fun when I'm in the mood, like tweaking this little miner, just kind of making it more good. Um, I often, by the way, don't build my mining delivery platforms this close to the to the uh, wind turbines, but this miner is so teeny, it doesn't seem to be much of an issue. I build bigger miners, and those things need their space. Okay, cool. So we got our nickel. Um, we should look, but the refinery should be chugging away on it. There's the basic refinery, which is chugging away on cobalt. I can uh, move that back. Uh, and then our, uh, where's our regular refiner? It's right there. It's chewing on nickel. It's, it's going to take it a little time. But that should bring production back. Yep, it did. Let me push our batteries up because we're waiting on that. There we go. Um, if we don't, I mean, generally we want to keep the inventories pretty full for Nanobot because you don't want it skipping and missing things. But if you do have a question about, you know, what is Nanobot missing, um, you can just grab your um, welder and look and you can see, ah, steel plate. We're out of steel plate. Fantastic. Um, so we can come back into production and say steel plate. Um, we do need a lot of motors, which is why I ordered a lot, because um, it is an atmospheric Do a pretty good job at packing those atmospheric engines in there tight. It's a it's a challenge. Um, I thought I read something in the documentation. Oh yeah, it says it has a rotor for charging. How would you use a rotor for charging? Can I put a large rotor head on it and then a connector and then connect it to the base and then just detach the rotor head? I'll bet that's what they're thinking. Who? okay, that's a new one for me. Because uh, I read something briefly in the documentation that was like, it has a small rotor underneath for recharging and a, and a camera, which is that right there, for helping you align. And I'm like, I'm not sure what a rotor has to do with recharging. But I think I figured it out. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because uh, this is atmospheric. It's going to chew that even on a little vehicle like this. It's going to it's going to burn through that battery um, worrisomely fast. But nanobots and as as well as welding walls, but especially nanobots are a thing of beauty. I mean, look at are we running back and forth welding by hand? No, we're not. Nanobots is doing it for us. Uh, you know what? I'm going to need to order some glass too because this design calls for a fair bit of glass. Interesting. It's got a antenna there, and that's where the camera is. One thing I kind of like about watching the nanobots build it, besides the just joy of realizing I'm not doing all that work, is you can kind of see how some of the guts are arranged, <coughs> which is good to know. Um. All right. So, uh, glass. I need. I need to order up some glass. Uh, Hundred's probably enough. So you could you could go around in the workshop and look for something that would get you out to space and you know on hy a hydrogen based miner um, you can build one yourself based on you know what you think your requirements are really good to build a ship big enough that uh, you can put some big batteries on it and have an H two O two generator I mean eventually you want you know uranium to power everything but until you can um, a hydrogen engine that generates electricity. Um, so that you don't absolutely deplete your batteries. 
Um, well, you know, because you're hydrogen powered, you actually only need one battery, I guess. Um, and then, um, yeah, a, a way to drill. Um, some people do double drills. I do a single drill. I, if I find uranium, until I have a space base, I don't really care. I mean, I, I, I can get a couple thousand K with my Explorer and it's fine. Um, sometimes you want uh, defenses, particularly if there's, you know, NPC mods, it can get a little dicey up in space and get a little dicey down here too. Um, so uh, let me remind myself really fast to build the um, to build um, medical comp oh, that's not how I remind myself it's this right there so I need silver okay because I, I, mean, I can log off and, you know, not have to worry about dying from exposure to time. But while our little ship prints, um, we can, oh, you know what? Um, let's make really fast a, um, a detector comp. Or detector comp. We need detector comp to make it. Uh, but let's put an ore detector on this thing. Uh, it's so small it doesn't matter where like there's no particular need it has to be like front and center like this uh, it can be really any place so for example we could just stick it right there it doesn't have to be in a particular orientation either um, so yeah we just need one detector comp for this which is great um, so let's come to production. Let's order that. There's detector comp, one single one. Let's push that up to the front of the line. Sweet. Uh, now we can middle click. What do you mean you couldn't just withdraw the one detector comp? It built it. Oh shit, my H2 is out, out. Sorry. Um, like it's out, out. I need to come back to the storage container here. <laughs> it's getting a little close. 0% uh, go down to my H2O2 gen, drag my tank into there. I also could make additional tanks. There's nothing keeping me at one tank. Drag my oxygen in there too. We're going through this ice a bit quick now because we've got, you know, an actual ship taking it up. Um, cannot withdraw once. I don't, I had it built. What's going on here? Um, didn't I? It's there. It's in the inventory. Okay. Um, so now we can come back to this little, little dude. Oh, it broke my paint scheme. Looks kind of cool, actually. Oh, Nanobot built it. That's why it disappeared. Duh. <laughs> Nanobot was on that. <laughs> I forgot. We're back in we're back in that mode right now. Engines on, detach. That's hilarious. I'm like, where'd it go? I was sure I built it. Yep, yeah, Nanobot for the win. Uh so this was my ice location. Where was my it was super close. It was right here, I think. Oh, I need to add some sideways engines still. Yep, gold and silver. This will be a little challenge because they're deeper. Um, but also, let me go to my control panel really quick because often ore detectors do not start with their full range. Yeah, see that? Crank that up to 50. It seems pretty silly to not do full range. Okay, so let's do a low fly over here and see if we can't find ourselves a hit for gold. Yep, right there, gold and silver on top of each other. And we're going very down here, like alarmingly down. Um, just be careful to try to not like wreck this thing, but we do need to go pretty deep. I might actually drill two holes down because I'm gonna have to probably pull out pretty level, maybe. 
I keep forgetting about adding the lights thing. Every time I get down here, I'm like, I should add lights, and then I forget. Little 2019, we're getting close. Gold mines tend to be what I call dirty, which means there's just not clean veins of it. They tend to be mixed with a lot of dirt. Um, so, which reminds me, I, I know I passed it, but I'm creating a fall area for the bad stuff. Okay, for real, can I turn my suit light on and then get back in? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't going to work. Um, what we could do, and I didn't show you this in the last video, it just got so long, was we could create an ejector with a little mini sorter that only ejects stone. Actually, we could create a bunch of them and it would just, it would keep the gold or iron or anything else because it, 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 it whitelists stone. And that way, when you're doing this and you're getting heavy because you've got a bunch of stone and you're, like, like I said, this is a really crappy vein, but this is really common for gold veins. Um, you could be pooping out with the ejector. You could be pooping out this, the stone this entire time. So that's another thing I would do as I continue to like make this, this little build better is I would, uh, I would add at least three ejectors to it, at least. Um, we're coming up on weight here. Um, I could try to manually throw out some of the rock, but I'm just gonna go with this. I think slash hope that I will have enough gold to do what I need to do and I need to go right. There it is. I can cut a right. Sometimes I do this. I'll right click on my way out. It just helps make the hole bigger. Keeping a really good eye on my horizon and my bubble because I weigh so much I can't afford to turn sideways right now. There we go. We are surfaced. We supposedly got some gold on here. <laughs> and maybe our little transporter will be will be built. And we arrive back. Uh, rule number one of flying at something, never fly at something, fly past it. In case you mess up your stopping distance. You will be in big trouble in my clan if you fly at things because things get hit. Uh, even me, I will overshoot things so often. All right, so let's go check the, I hear no construction, that's a good sound. That either means it's missing some components that it needs or it's in, in fact done. Uh, basic refinery, let's see here. Uh, it can't do gold, but there we go. Let's put the gold to the front. Uh, so this is great. The gold will allow us to build some medical comp. The medical comp will allow us to build a cryo chamber and the cryo chamber will allow us to have a place that we can sleep. Uh, this is not done. What's going on here? Um, we just ran out of plate again. All right, did we run out of plate because we ran out of iron? Yep, yep, we did. <laughs> so you kind of see how it goes. And this is why you do want better and better miners. Like this is a great start. This is a thousand times better than mining by hand, even with good mining equipment by hand. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, 13,000, am I not empty? Oh, I'm empty, okay. I just didn't know that was my operational weight uh, at the end of the day um, there was some uh, oh oh, oh the, um, the yeah the machine mining is really the way to go all right iron mine so now in fact you can probably start to think in terms of okay yeah double miner you know a little more storage capacity you know, a little more thrust to compensate and uh, light thing. Um, you know, you, you can see how this evolves until uh, if you watch my video on the path auto miner, which includes the 
uh, me talking about the um, the um, the miner that I the vertical miner that I developed to work with Path Auto Miner. That's peak mining <laughs> right there. It's so great. Um, and that would be where I would go from here, actually. I would go, personally, I would go straight from this that I'm doing right now. I would get enough resources um, to build. Well, I would still prioritize getting up into space and looking for uranium and uh, platinum. But um, I would super prioritize um, building my, um, my PAM uh, units and... Uh, I do want to make those available on the in the community. I promised that I would in that other video, so I just need to do it. Uh, I tend to not release anything to the community. Oops, 85. Uh, unless it's pretty perfected, and I've used it a lot. And I feel super, super confident in it. It's close to that. Um, so I probably just need to give it a once over and then submit it to the, the workshop. But I, I don't like to let anything out really I think I've only published the um, my atmospheric welder but in my opinion it's perfection in an atmospheric welders um, my humble opinion I should add all right so we're back on the iron track except that probably so busy refining gold we're not going to catch iron <laughs> the basic refinery going the regular refinery going and check our production we don't even have steel on order we're close we're so close. I'll fly this around. We'll call it a video. Uh, and um, I can actually make some medical comp now. I should do that. That's this right here. I don't know how much I need. Uh, 10 would be plenty. Whoops, that's 100. Wrong button. Control. I got gold and I needed silver. <coughs> silly, silly me. So what I would probably do in this situation is um, cryo chamber. There's what it looks like. Put it on the G menu here. It has a single uh, connector on the back, much to my chagrin. I really wish it had them on the bottom. Um, so if I put it there, uh, oh, it's an interior plate based, um, but I could put it right there, uh, build a little floor out in front of it, and then just crawl into it. Uh, it needs hydrogen oxygen source, so I would make sure that that H2O2 gen had plenty of ice, uh, and it'd be good to go. I could be in there for, you know, as long as I needed to be. Um, so there's that. Oh, gosh. All that work for gold, and I needed silver. Uh, this thing is quite nearly done. It would have been faster if I had everything ready. That's why you build up a big supply of material components. But we are really almost there. And then at some point I'll figure out how to actually hook this, uh, this rotor up as sort of a, a connecting mount. That might actually just be a fantastic idea. Uh, so you can draw power from the base, I mean. Um, I mean, you could do that as as my miner does with a standard connector connector, but they're trying to be, you know, too lean and mean to stick a big ugly connector on there. Plus, where would it go? I guess you could probably put one right there, but yeah, that'd look pretty awful. You can probably put one right there too. Again, it would look really awful. So this is just kind of a fun thing, um, but you can fly around because it's got an ore detector on it and, you know, spot spot stuff. Uh, I like how it's got the brake lights. Details. Uh, 
Um, so you can add additional build and repair bots. Um, that would be another thing I would do at some point is just continue to string them along here in a row. Um, uh, with this base, I would continue adding additional uh, refineries. Um, and then way out here, uh, I would actually build my assembler system. And then on the far end of the assembler system, I would have my storage system, my final storage system. I usually have two. I have my raw material storage bins and I have my component storage bins. Um, sometimes I use sorters for that. It kind of just helps keep things from clogging as much. Oh, that's part of why I keep running out of steel. It's, it's welding up everything that wasn't welded, including that, including the panels underneath here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it told you it would do that a couple videos ago um, cool I think I can cut this thing free if the engines are animating even a little bit they should be working and they are is that a parachute no it's a storage container interesting and there's an annoying speaker thing so let me grab the grinder and I think I'm safe to cut it um, and then uh, jump in and see what happens you can hit alt when you're in the seat uh, one brakes on off navigation lights why would this thing say brakes uh, let me hit V what navigation lights oh, I guess that five camera hook six to seven Attach, detach. Yeah, I was right. My theory was right. That is an interesting way of connecting. I'm going to have to play with that on the base side to make sure it's all proper. Eight, or detector. It's on. Nine, power charge. Yeah. All right. Let's see how this thing... I'm not doing it on much battery, but let's see how it flies. Woo! There's a lot of get up and go. It's fun. Hmm. Nice. Probably need to turn this ore detector up too. It's probably down to that small amount. Ah, it's fun. Uh, you can see how much battery I have. I'm pushing forward and it says right underneath my mic right there, it says nine minutes. And that'll actually drop as I engage more engines. See, it says seven. Pretty cool. I mean, it's still a little awkward, <laughs> the, uh, the rotor thing, but definitely less awkward than a full-blown uh, connector. Although it almost looks like you could get away with a connector on the back and it wouldn't be the most dramatic problem in the world uh, based on this design. I wonder if I can... Uh, I wonder if I can just kind of use the... Uh, Uh, but what I wanted you to see, obviously, with this is, uh, let's see, engines off. Why are there still engines on? Oh, man, we crashed out. It's so weird. I wonder where it saved last. Um, that's actually everything I wanted to cover in this. I will continue to do additional videos of, of advanced topics, um, but, um, and, and I may use some of, you know, this little basic base we set up to, to, to launch some of those um, concepts. De obviously, if you want to learn something in specific, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, but yeah, I, I know this has been long, but I kind of tried to do a really handholdy walkthrough of how to get a great start. If you get good at this, you can do it really fast. Again, if you have a partner, you can do it really fast and, uh, and it's, it, it's, it gets you going and it gets you to the fun parts of space engineers really fast. And when there's a server reset or something bad happens, you're like, ah, whatever, we will rebuild. So this is Expressman. Hope you've liked this series and, uh, as always stick around. We're always doing something fun. Take care.